the DNC is making a play for more than one person. They're definitely making a play for Elizabeth Warren, but they're still pushing Biden down people's throats. They're still trying to keep Kamala Harris in the race. Um, I think Cory Booker might be struggling, and I'll talk about that. And I think that they're uh, fighting for Pete Buttigieg. Um, Amy Klobuchar probably is not a top tier enough for them. Um, but they keep claiming like Kamala is, Pete Buttigieg is. Uh, like they keep saying Joe Biden's a top tier candidate. Like Joe Biden came out and was just like, yeah, I don't have to do shit in Iowa. Like we have that shit on lock. And it's like, according to who? Who says you have Iowa on lock? Like... That's like, you know, that's just kind of proof that the fucking DNC is just like, don't worry about it. You'll get through Iowa. Like, we'll make sure that you get through Iowa, you know? So, it's just like shit like that. Um, but to kick it off, they did they did a nice little intro where they, uh, they you know, uh, played some quotes from the candidates and stuff like that. And I was very incredibly surprised that uh, they included uh, Yang, Tulsi, and Bernie. I was very surprised to see them in the intro. I thought they would. I thought they would black them out for sure, like totally. Like when they started playing the little clips from everybody, like all this, all the little cutesy things that people say. Um, you know, like those little little Twitter bites that they grab um, and try to make a story out of thirty seconds worth of out of context clips. Uh, like that's kind of the thing that they did, right? And. Uh, uh, you know, I was very surprised that they used uh, Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, and Bernie Sanders in that. Um, we're at the Tyler Perry studio, uh, which I was like, look, if, if, if the Democrats are trying to get away from, like, being like, the Hollywood liberals, oh, the liberal elites from Hollywood, like, if they're trying to get away from all that kind of shit, like, why... Why would you pick that place? Was nothing else available? Like, what the fuck? It just seems kind of weird. Like, you kind of, you're kind of doubling down on, um, you know, uh, the the thing that kind of gets you gets people in trouble. That you know, like, it's you're out of touch Hollywood liberals. You're out of touch liberals. Like, the liberals don't know what they're talking about because they're all rich elite kind of people, which the Republicans are too. So, uh, it's kind of strange. Uh, but let's, let's, get into, let's get into what the debates actually did, and we'll, we'll kind of go to subject by subject. Uh, I think that's the easiest way that we might be able to, like, break this stuff down. Um, and I'm sorry if there's moments where you probably can't see my face because the sun is right behind me. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, you know, I am once again trying to beat the sun! Fucking daylight savings! <laughs> Uh, but the the debates started with uh, with just talking about the impeachment. I mean, that's sort of all they talk about now, right? Like, like they failed on Russia Gate, and now this is all they have. They're like, oh, we'll impeach him this way. Oh, we'll get him with the Ukraine shit, which is like, look, the, I, I, I'm not an expert on the Ukraine shit. Um, I, I need to do a lot more homework on that. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff that happened in Ukraine based on. Uh, that is connected to American foreign policy and American interventionism. Uh, but the one thing I will say is uh, what they're accusing Trump of doing is basically what Joe Biden did when he was vice, vice president, like when he was in office, when he was part of a presidential administration. He basically levied to get a job for his kid that his kid was not fucking qualified for to get $30,000 a day or some, some shit like that. Um, for a job that he wasn't qualified for in Ukraine, and and if that didn't happen, uh, then he would like hold up aid to Ukraine. He would hold up like military aid to Ukraine, and that's what they're claiming Trump did. So if if we're gonna if if we're gonna say that you have to impeach Trump because of it, then you have to also hold Joe Biden accountable for what he did, and say that. You know what? You should talk. You you should remove yourself from the race um, because you're a corrupt candidate. So that's what they started with. They started with the impeachment trials, uh, and uh, of course, the first person they talked to was Warren. 
uh, and the and the first thing she says was nobody's above the law, and you know there's like uh, money rules in Washington, so there's a lot of corruption in uh, in Washington, and she talked about how oh, how she's gonna take she's not she's not gonna take these corporate money and become their ambassadors, but but she'll take corporate money, but she's not gonna be her ambassador, okay? And we saw that in the uh, she's she's like yeah if I become the candidate in the general election I'm going to take PAC money I'm going to take corporate money because the Republicans are going to do it oh yeah oh the Rep- oh that's the oh the Republicans are going to do it you know the the Republicans also gerrymander uh, and uh, keep black people from voting and uh, uh, want to you know take women's health care rights away do, do you want to do that too because the Republicans want to do it Liz. Is that really like a good excuse to do something? Oh, the Republicans are taking corporate money. Well, obviously, I, I mean, I, I mean, I need to too. But I'm for the people, you know. I'm for the people taking corporate money. That that level of hypocrisy within within the first within the first fucking question, she drops that hypocrisy down. So they move to Klobuchar, Amy Klobuchar, Bill Maher's favorite. Bill Maher loves Amy Klobuchar. <laughs> He thinks Amy Klobuchar is great, and I and I met I, look, I met a couple of people that are like, yeah, she's cool. You know that thing where she ate a fucking salad with a comb because she flipped out on an intern, and then she ate a salad with a comb. Yeah, that's what I like to see. You know, innovation through mental instability. <laughs> that's what I want in a presidential candidate. I just want somebody that's gonna yell at. So, uh, an intern, and then eat food with a with with a thing that's not a utensil, you know. So Klobuchar uh, says democracy is at stake. That's what she said. Um, that might be true. Again, I'm not, you know, I'm not fully up on the whole Ukraine thing. Every time I look at. What's going on with the Ukraine thing? Everything just seems murky, right? But if she thinks that democracy is at stake here uh, because of because of like election interference, because of like corrupt uh, politicking, like don't you think you should go after the DNC for rigging the last elections against Bernie Sanders? Shouldn't you be against the regime change wars that don't bring democracy to other countries? But but do bring, like, drone warfare to these countries? Shouldn't you be against that? Shouldn't you speak out against that? But you didn't. The only candidate that spoke out against it is Tulsi Gabbard, and she gets smeared. Sanders uh, was asked a question, and he said we can't be consumed by Trump, right? He talks about uh, the Trump derangement syndrome, and he addresses uh, the nature of duality, that we should be able to... Um, be able to run a uh, legitimate investigation to see if there was any wrongdoing, uh, to push for impeachment trials, to see if we have, if, if, if there's even legal grounds for us to run an impeachment trial, uh, and, uh, and be able to, to run an effective government that's able to give uh, the American people health care and talk about national security and talk about um, you know, gun reform and immigration and, and all that stuff, right? So, so you have 100, 100 senators and 435 representatives. So over 500 people in, in Congress that are uh, representatives of the country. On top of, uh, on top of that, probably in, uh, another 100 some odd people that work within the White House. And then the judicial courts itself. So, you know, you have, you have a large amount of people that are uh, dictating legislation and dictating the nature of um, uh, laws in this country. And you're telling me the only thing we can focus on is impeaching the president and not talking about anything else. The first question that's asked in this debate is about is about this this thing that we don't have full proof for, right? Like. Like, everybody keeps screaming, smoking gun, smoking gun. There's a CIA whistleblower who's still in the CIA, which that should... You're still in the CIA? You're not a fucking whistleblower. You're a corporate toady. 
Nancy Pelosi wants to be on your side, you're not a real fucking whistleblower. Julian Assange is a whistleblower. Edward Snowden is a real whistleblower. Chelsea Manning is a real whistleblower. Daniel Ellsberg, Daniel Everett Hale. These are real people that revealed actual crimes of the United States government and uh, and uh, 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 of, of corporate elites in this country. And there's not one fucking question about them. There's not one question one question about what you would what you would do uh, 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 about these whistleblowers. Do you consider them heroes? Do, will you stand up for their constitutional right to reveal the crimes of the American elites? Instead, you have this bullshit question to start a debate. Mayor Pete said uh, pretty much nothing with a bunch of flowery words, as he usually does, right? He's like, I passed the SATs. I got got a good score on the reading part and vocabulary part of the SATs. I I, I, I did good. I did good on the SATs. Look at all these words that I know. Biden uh, came out and said we need to we need to have somebody that's going to be able to work with the Republicans and convince them uh, that this guy needs to be impeached. Uh, and and, uh, and and Biden is uh, Biden's worked with Republicans on on passing legislation before. Yes, you have horrific Republican legislation. Not not demo, not something that the Democrats wanted. Not something that the people wanted. Uh, something that levy the interest of the private sector, which is basically what both parties do. Not only that, but you're also being... You committed the same fucking crime, Biden. Joey B. You committed the same crime, bro. Moving on to Harris, what what is what she said. Uh... She claims that uh, what this shows is that there are two sets of laws in America, right? Um, and I've made this argument before. There are two sets of laws. There's laws uh, for the people and laws for the elites, which means that the elites are above the law. Um, and Harris says that she's going she's gonna to uphold these laws and make sure that nobody is above them, you know? Laws for the people, like, like truancy laws where the parent goes to prison if the kid's not at school. You know, putting putting people in jail for smoking that marijuana. Oh yeah, we're gonna, yeah. Supporting the prison industrial complex. We're gonna do that. Oh yeah, what about what about when bankers steal homes from people? What about when pharmaceutical companies uh, flood the market with, uh, with with an addictive substance that they knew was going to be addictive for the for the sake of uh, profits? You're gonna go after them too. Because your record shows that that no, you fucking ain't. Just live it like she's. Every word out of Kamala Harris's mouth in this entire election was just littered with hypocrisies, littered with hypocrisies. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, You can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. uh, Share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, And another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road. Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content that was discussed and the and the type of humor that you saw in this video, then you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. I've got live shows coming up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, Bloomington, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Columbia, South Carolina, New York City, Philadelphia. I'm going to be on tour uh, in in a whole bunch of places uh, at the end of 2019 and into 2020. Go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com for my entire tour schedule. That's R-A-M-A-N, 
noodlescomedy.com. Check out my entire tour schedule, get your tickets there, and uh, we'll see you on the road. Thanks again.